Here we're gonna look at two pretty quick questions from the Albanian Math Olympiad. So I'm not gonna do my standard of giving hints to these problems and then looking at a full solution because I think that any hint for these problems would give it away too much. So if you wanna pause the video right now and give these a go, I would do that. Now let's jump right into the solution of the first problem. So we wanna show that seven to the 37 plus 13 to the 37 plus 19 to the 37 is divisible by 39. So let's see how we can do that. Maybe the first thing that we can notice is that 39 divides a number. So let's say 39 divides n if and only if 3 divides n and 13 divides n. And that's because 3 and 13 are relatively prime. In fact, 3 and 13 are both primes. 39 factors as that product of primes. And so what we really want to show is that 3 divides this. In other words, this thing is a multiple of 3. And then we'll also show that this thing is a multiple of 39. And then we'll be good to go. So let's maybe first show that it's a multiple of 3. Good. And we're going to do this by using the notion of congruence modulo n. In this case, it's going to be congruence modulo 3. So let's go ahead and recall that we say that a is congruent to b mod n if and only if n divides b minus a. But th that's also equivalent to saying that b and a, or a and b, have the same remainder after dividing by n. And I want to point out that all of the nice arithmetic properties among the natural numbers transfer over to the natural numbers modulo n. So let's first notice that 7 to the 37 is going to be congruent to 1 to the 37 modulo 3 because if we divide 7 by 3, we get a remainder of 1, but 1 to the 37 is obviously 1, so we have 7 to the 37 is 1 mod 3. And now we can continue that 13 to the 37. So that's going to be the same thing as 1 to the 37 mod 3, because 13 is 1 more than 12. But that's going to be 1 mod 3. And then similarly, 19 to the 37, that's 1 more than 18, which is a multiple of 3. So we get this is 1 to the 37, which is congruent to 1 mod 3. But now putting these together, we see that 7 to the 37 plus 13 to the 37 plus 19 to the 37 is going to be congruent to 1 plus 1 plus 1, um, which is congruent to 0 mod 3. Because 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, but 3 is clearly a multiple of 3, so that's congruent to 0 mod 3. So we have proven that our object over here is a multiple of 3. Now let's go ahead and prove that it's a multiple of 13. So how are we going to do that? So there are actually some hints built into the structure of this already. And one of the hints is that 13 to the 37 is a multiple of 13 already. So that's pretty clear. And then another hint built into the structure here is that 7 plus 19 equals 26, which is 2 times 13. So if we take the sum of 7 and 19, we get a multiple of 13. Now, as I see it, there's like an easy way to finish this thing off, and that would be to factor this 7 to the 37 plus 19 to the 37 and write it out like really carefully. But what I want to use is something a little bit more powerful, and that's a result from factorization of polynomials over integers. So I want to consider the following polynomial. So I'm going to set p of x equal to x to the 37 plus 7 to the 37. And then what I want to notice 
is that this p of x has a root when x is equal to negative seven. So in other words, we have p evaluated at negative seven is equal to zero. Okay, good. But what that tells me is that we can factor this uh, polynomial p of x in the following way. We can factor it as p of x equals x plus seven times, I'm gonna go ahead and call this thing q of x. So that's a standard rule. If you have a root of a polynomial, you can factor the corresponding monomial out. But a priori, we don't know that q of x has coefficients in the integers, which is actually pretty important for our setup. But there are some results in the theory of factorization of polynomials that will say that these coefficients are in the integers. So maybe we'll just write it like that. Good. But now what I want to do is evaluate this polynomial at 19, but I'm going to evaluate that two different ways. So I'll evaluate it at 19, and then using the definition, that's going to be equal to 19 to the 37 plus 7 to the 37. But then, using this factorization, that's going to be 19 plus 7, which is 26, times this other polynomial, q, evaluated at 19. So we have something like that. But that allows us to take our whole object up here, which is 7 to the 37 plus 13 to the 37 plus 19 to the 37, and rewrite it as 13. I'm gonna factor 13 out of the whole thing. And then I have 13 to the 36, that comes from this middle term, plus two times this polynomial Q evaluated at 19. And again, we have two choices here. We can explicitly write that polynomial down. That's not super hard to do. It's an alternating sum of things involving some binomial coefficients. Maybe if someone wants to write that down in the comments, that would be great. Or we could use this result, which I think is totally allowed um, in the realm of these um, problem solving contests to say that these coefficients are in the integers. But look at what we've got here. We've got our object is a multiple of 13, but that means together with it being a multiple of three, we know that it is a multiple of 39, which was the goal. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and then we'll look at the second question. So we finished this nice number theory problem. Now we're gonna look at this nice, simple calculus problem. And I'm like pretty inspired by this problem. I think it's, you know, fairly simple, but interesting. And I think it could maybe fit into a Calculus 1 exam or maybe the bonus question on a Calculus 1 exam depending on the student population. So let's see what we want to do. We want to find the equation of the line tangent to this function f of x, which is this product x times x plus 1 all the way up to x plus n at x equals 0. So if we want to find the equation of the tangent line, well, what do we need? We need a point and we need the slope. Whenever we want to find the equation of a line, we need those two things. So let's go ahead and find the point first. But the point here is fairly simple. Notice we're given the x value, and then the y value will be the function evaluated at that x value. But since this is a multiple of x, well, the y value is also going to be 0. So here we have 0, 0. That's our point. This thing goes to the origin. Now we know that the equation of this tangent line is going to be of the form y equals mx. So all we have to do is find that slope. Whenever we're finding the slope of a tangent line, we need to find the derivative. So that's like kind of one of the first motivations for defining the derivative in the first place as the slope of the tangent line. So let's go ahead and do that. We want to take the derivative of this function f. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to take this derivative. You could use some sort of um, very general version of the product rule because we're taking the product of n plus 1 functions here. But I think that's a bit overpowered. The way I want to think of it is splitting this thing up into two functions. So we'll split it up into x 
times the rest of this product. So we've got x plus one all the way up to x plus n. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take the derivative of x first, but that's just one. And so that gives us x plus one, x plus two, all the way up to x plus n. And then we're going to have plus x. And now here I'm just gonna write the derivative of x plus one all the way up to x plus n. So that would be the second portion of this where again, I'm like using uh, the product rule here. And the beautiful thing is since we're worried about the point when x equals zero, we don't actually care what this derivative which I've bracketed in orange is because if I set x equal to zero, this thing right here cancels because I've got a multiple of x there. So let's go ahead and notice that if I take f prime of zero, I'm going to get zero plus one, zero plus two, all the way up to zero plus n. So I get this product one times two times three, all the way up to n plus zero. So in other words, I have this rising product from one to n, but there's another name for that and that's n factorial. So now that we've got the slope and we've got a point, we can easily write the equation of this tangent line. We have its y equals n factorial times x. And that's a good place to stop.